Hey guys, welcome to Geo Butsuku. Uh, in my previous video, I covered global air circulation where I looked at the three uh, planetary winds, namely the tropical easterlies, the westerlies, and our polar easterlies. So these three winds are known as the planetary winds. I also labeled the pressure belt. At the zero degree line of latitude, which is my equator, I had the equatorial low pressure belt. 30 degrees north and south, I had the subtropical high pressure belt. 60 degrees north south, I had the subpolar low pressure belt. And at the poles, 90 degrees north, 90 degrees south, I had the polar high pressure belt. Now between 0 degrees, 3 degrees, I had a tropical easterlies. The tropical easterlies are found between 0 degrees, 30 degrees, 0 degrees, 30 degrees, north and south. They are called easterlies because they blow from the, or they come from the east. Now tropical easterlies are also known as trade winds. They are also known as trade winds. From 0, sorry, from 30 to 60, I have my westerlies. They come from the west, hence they are named westerlies. 60 degrees to 90 degrees, I have my polar easterlies. My polar easterlies. But in today's video, we are moving on to tricellular air circulation. The movement of air in the atmosphere is not random. It follows a structured pattern forming our three cells. The Hadley cell, feral cell and the polar cell now in this video we are going to focus on the formation of these three cells now if you look at this drawing this is a drawing of my earth as a sphere now this one here I'm, I'm drawing it on a horizontal line what i'm going to draw here will be the same as what i'm going to do here because in most exam papers they will give you the three cells in a straight line instead of a circle now this zero degree represents this zero degree line of latitude, which is my equator. There is it here. Zero degrees at the equator, zero degrees here. In the northern hemisphere, I have 80 degrees north. I have it on my line, 80 degrees north. Then I have 60 degrees north, I have it here. 90 degrees north, I have it on my line. On the other side of the line, I have 80 degrees south, 60 degrees south, and 90 degrees south. So, Everything that I have here, I have it on my straight line. Now, if you rem if you watched uh, last week's video, you know that when we have a low pressure, the air rises or ascends, it goes up. But when there's a high pressure, the air sinks. The air sinks or descends. Now, zero degrees at the, at the equator, we have the low pressure. We have the equatorial low pressure belt. So at the equator, zero degrees, we have a low pressure. And I said, when is the low pressure, the air rises. So I'm going to draw an arrow going up. So the air rises. I'm, I'm putting two arrows, one for my northern hemisphere and one for my southern hemisphere. So where is the low pressure, the air rises. Now, in this diagram, this is how I would put it. I'll draw line lines going in this direction because this represents my surface and on the straight line this line is my surface so on this line when the air rises i'll draw arrows pointing up but in this diagram when air rises i will draw arrows pointing towards the east okay now this air will rise towards the upper limit of the troposphere which is the tropopause and in our troposphere, we know that temperature decreases with height, which means the higher you go, the colder it gets. So eventually, this warm air, which was rising in the equator, is going to cool. And when it cools, it will diverge. It will diverge in both directions. So, when the low pressure, the air rises. And then when it reaches the upper limits of our troposphere, it diverges. So I'm going to also draw it here. It is diverging even when in this diagram it is diverging it's going in other directions now it is going to diverge and then it will sink and then it will sink at 30 degrees south and at 30 degrees north I'll draw two arrows it's sinking 30 degrees south and 30 degrees north 
Now when it sinks, air that sinks is associated with a high pressure. When it sinks at 30 degrees south, 30 degrees north, it forms a high pressure. It forms a high pressure belt known as the subtropical high pressure belt. Now, from last week's video, I told you guys, winds always move from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure. Now, at the surface here, we have a low pressure, which is the equatorial low. And then on this side, we have a uh, tropical, so there's a subtropical high pressure belt. Now, these winds are going to go towards the low pressure, the low pressure. Because winds always go from a high pressure towards a low pressure, from a high pressure towards a low pressure. So, uh, 30 degrees south, we have a high pressure, it will go towards the zero degrees, where there's a low pressure. So it converges where there's a low pressure it converges it comes together here now these two cells which are formed is actually one cell because it's one for my northern hemisphere one for my southern hemisphere this cell is known as the headly cell it is the headly cell it is the headly cell this is the headly cell this is the headly cell okay let me throw it on this diagram I said when there's a low pressure the air rises and then it diverges then it diverges then by 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south it is going to sink it is going to sink when this air sinks it forms the high pressure which is the subtropical high pressure it forms the high pressure which is the subtropical high pressure now this is a high pressure this is a low pressure winds will always go from a high towards a low so they want to converge towards the low pressure converging towards the low pressure forming our headly cell this is our headly cell this is our headly cell so what i have here and what i have here the same thing it's the same thing now remember the day decreased north the air was sinking it is going to sink and Diverge because there's a high pressure here. Where, where there's a high pressure, the air will diverge, but where there's a low pressure, it will converge. 30 degrees north, 30 degrees south, we have high pressure, subtropical high pressure. So the air must diverge here at the surface, it must diverge towards the 60. When it reaches the 60, this arrow is now pointing towards the 60, pointing towards the 60, which means it is converging towards the 60. It is, it is converging towards the 60, it is going towards it, which forms a low pressure, a subpolar low pressure belt. Subpolar low pressure belt at 60. Because the air which was descending at 30 diverged towards the 60 forming a low pressure and we know that where there's a low pressure air rises air rises where there's a low pressure air does what it rises and when it rises it diverges it's diverging it's going in this direction it's going in the other direction it's diverging even here it's going in this direction and then it's going in the other direction it is diverging after it diverges it is going to sink. It is going to sink at the poles. It is going to sink at the poles. It is going to sink at the poles. Now, once it sinks, remember, air that sinks is associated with a high pressure. It is going to form a high pressure belt here, which is known as the polar high pressure belt. Even on this side, the high pressure which is which is formed. This high pressure belt is known as the polar high pressure belt now we know that air or winds winds will always blow from a high pressure towards a low pressure at the surface now we have a high pressure so now this wind must go towards the low pressure it must converge here where there is a low pressure where there is a low pressure the winds must converge where there is a high pressure they diverge even here we have uh, the, the polar high pressure belt it must go towards the low pressure it must convert
red. Now we have one, two, three cells which have formed. This one is the Hadley cell. The next one is the this number two is the Ferral cell. Then number three is the polar cell. The same applies for my northern hemisphere. The cell between zero to eight degrees is my Hadley cell. The next one is the this one is the Hadley cell H. This one is the Ferral cell. And the last one is the polar cell. Is the polar cell. Now let me add them to this diagram. Uh, from this high pressure uh, cell, the air went to the low pressure because winds would always go from a high pressure to a low pressure. Now, at the low pressure, air rises. It has to rise. It has to rise. Now, when it rises, it has to diverge. It diverges at the upper limits of the troposphere because it cools and creates a high pressure there. And then now it has to sink. It has to sink. Once it sinks, it's forming the polar high pressure belt. And then from there, it will go from the polar high pressure belt towards the subtropical low pressure belt where it's going to converge. It's going to converge. The same will happen in our southern hemisphere. The air went, the winds went from the high pressure towards the low pressure. Now at the low pressure, air rises goes up and then at the top it's going to diverge it's going to diverge when it diverges when it gets to the next uh, 30 degree line of latitude it's going to sink or subside forming the polar high pressure belt now from this polar high pressure belt the wind will blow towards the uh, sub polar low pressure belt because winds will always go from a high pressure towards a low pressure so this cell is our head this cell next one is our viral cell then our polar cell the same will apply for my north hemisphere a b c a is our head cell is our head cell B is our barrel cell and then C is our polar cell. So what I have on this line is the same thing that I have on this field. 